Welcome to worship. I'm glad that you're here. My name is Pastor Dwayne Coates, and I'm still new here, so I'm so glad that you're wearing name tags. I'm going to need those through the end of August to remember some of your names. I know that some of you are, are new, or at least new to me here, so a special welcome to you, and a special welcome to those who are joining us online. It's grateful that you're here. Please spread the word that we're here every Sunday, same time. So today, we're celebrating back to school, back to work, back to the regular program year for the church. So we're going to celebrate that today with a backpack blessing. So hopefully the kids brought their backpacks, and if not, they can bring them again next week when we have our uh, Sunday school kickoff. So I'll invite our uh, lector, Dave Hansen, to come forward and uh, lead us in, in this call to worship. Good morning. You want to do your... Connection? Yeah, let's do our connection, connection question. I'm new here. I've got to learn how this is done. So if you'll stand as you're able to move about this space and ask each other, what is one thing you make sure you take with you each day when you go to work or school? Good morning. My name is Dave Hansen, and it's my pleasure to serve as the lector for today. Our smartphone-friendly bulletin can be accessed from our webpage if you would like to follow along, as well as worship together. Please rise in spirit and body and join me in the call to worship. Come, let us lift up our voices and our souls to God. We trust in the Lord. May the Lord teach us the way that we should choose. We turn to God, relieves the troubles of our hearts, and brings us out of our distress. God makes us to know divine ways. The Lord teaches us the paths of righteousness. For the Lord is the God of our sin. Let us sing of our joy to the God of wisdom and with this traditional hymn, God of grace and God of glory. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. The words are found on the screen and or at number 57, 577 in our Navy Pew Hymnal. Verses 1, 2, and 4. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thy ancient church story her bought to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Though the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ ourselves, Doubts too long have bound us. Your hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. For the living of these days. Verse 4. Search for thy salvation. 
and crown my You may be seated. Please join me in our prayer of the day, which will be, we will pray in unison. The words are found in your worship guide or on the screen. God of grace and glory, we thank you that you judge us not by the perfection of our actions, but by our readiness to live boldly by faith. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to trust you and follow where you lead, that in Christ your name be glorified in all the earth. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is taken from the first chapter of the historical book of Joshua. Joshua was the successor of Moses, who for 40 years in the desert led the Israelites to the border of the Promised Land. At this point in the Israelite story, the Promised Land is literally filled with giants. So to accomplish God's will, as promised for many centuries at that point, this new leader, Joshua, faces the unenviable task of literally facing the giants of fear. This text was chosen as appropriate for those of us facing a new school year with its new challenges. It is also appropriate for others who are facing a new church program year or in new identities as children take different places in their educational process. Hear what God said to Joshua that holds true for us today. Joshua 1, verses 6 through 9. Be strong and courageous, for you shall lead this people to to possess the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Invite the uh, children who are people who brought their backpacks to come forward for a backpack blessing while the rest of us sing on eagle's wings. God will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of God's hand. Amen. Well, I guess it's just us today, Cadence and Emmett. How are you guys? Good. Well, Yeah, I went there too. Did you have the walking tacos? No! You didn't know that they were selling food, did you? Well, you already ate. Yes, very good. Well, thank you for bringing your backpacks. They're so interesting. Pikachu and is this Mona? No. What does it say? Moda West. Anyway, it's pink and blue. And some surprise? Supplies, yes. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned supplies because we're going to be talking to the adults about the supplies that we take with us in our backpacks, but they're not physical supplies. They're more like character supplies, like attitudes and things that we want to take, things like compassion. School stuff. School stuff. Yeah, we want to be compassionate when we go to school and kind and humble and meek, and have patience, right? Now, there's a lot of big words in there. You know what compassion means? Uh, it means that you, it means, compassion means that you have, like, feelings. 
Yeah, it does. It's a two-part word, come and passion. And we don't think about passion as being… Um, fancy. No, we don't think about it being fancy. But um, usually we think, think about it as being like intense or angry about something, but it also can mean suffering. You know, like Jesus suffered on the cross. We talk about the passion of Christ, the suffering of Christ. And com, C-O-M, sometimes means with. So, having compassion or having, having suffering with. It's kind of like some other big words that we use, but you want to you wanna be kind and you want to, um, I, like, practice the golden rule. You treat people the way that you want to be treated. Yeah, and we know what kindness is, right? Yeah, we know what humility is, right? No. Not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, being humble. Another way of thinking about it is to think that all of the gifts that we have, all the things that we're good at, we're good at because God loves us. So it's not because we produced them. It's not like we, you know, created our talents. No, God gave us those talents. And so you re realize that what you have comes from God. Do you know the word meek? Meek. What does that sound like to you? Um, it sounds like, it kind of sounds like new, new, unique, whatever. It sounds like unique? Yeah. Unique New York? That's hard to say. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Sometimes when my family and I are trying to wake up our voices, we say tongue twisters like unique New York. Well, meek, sometimes adults equate that to weak, like, oh, he's a meek person, he must be weak. Actually, it's the opposite. Meek is a strong person who chooses not to use their strength in mean ways, okay? It means gentle, deciding to be gentle when you don't have to be or you could be a bully instead. That's you. You're meek. You're a strong person, but you choose instead to be gentle. That's very wise. And, of course, we know what patience is. You'll have to wait until it's your turn. Yeah. And sometimes it's like carrying a heavy weight, isn't it? Like a heavy load. Like, oh. oh God. I better push it up. Okay. Yeah. Having a long fuse, I sometimes say. You know, some people get angry really quickly. I say that they have a short fuse. Some people, it takes a long time for them to get angry because they're patient. And you know what? That's something we can practice. I don't think we're born with patience. You know very many babies that no, are patient? No. One's ever. No. no one's ever patient. <laughs> no, but we can practice it, right? We can practice a lot of these things. And so people at school are going to need all of those things. They're going to need your compassion. They're going to need your meekness, your patience, your humility. And so when you go to school, and I know that you're excited about it, and yet you're kind of nervous about it at the I'm same not time. Nervous. Oh no, never! You would never be nervous. I can lift up uh, heavy metal. You can lift up heavy metal. Well, yeah, my dad. Uh, your dad's heavy metal, <laughs> in more ways than one, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, we want to give your backpack some added blessing. Um, blessing meaning set apart for a holy purpose. Um, giving it some extra power. Now, it's not going to help you, you know, survive of jumping off the roof or anything, so don't try that. Um, but it's going to be an outward and visible sign that God loves you and that we love you, and that when you wear this, people will recognize that you belong to us and you belong to God. I have a question. Who would jump off a roof? I, that crazy people, I think. <laughs> Um, so, I'm going to give a blessing to these, but I'm going to read you some of the scriptures um, that go with this. This pink one is from 1 Timothy 4.12, and it says, Set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And the black one is from the Old Testament, from the Hebrew scripture, Jeremiah 29.11. Some adults have that one memorized. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you hope and a future. That's good. And then this one, the blue one, is from what we read today, 
Joshua, be strong and courageous. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Okay, Emma, you want a black one too? You can each. Okay, yes, the blue one. Okay. You do get to pick a sucker, but I'm going to pray over these backpacks. Let me just grab my prayer. And I'll invite the congregation, if you would, to maybe extend a hand as I, as I bless these backpacks. Okay. All right. We're going to quiet our bodies and our mouths while we pray, all right, and be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, we th- thank you and love you for loving us as we try to follow your example every day. Today, we pray for these students. They stand here ready to get the good things you promised us. They are ready to study and learn, and so we ask you to bless each of them. We pray also for courage, courage to learn even challenging things. Lord God, we ask you to bless your your blessing on these backpacks. May they hold the schoolwork of each student close to their bodies, almost as close as you hold us almost as close as the prayers of this congregation. So, Lord, we pray that when these students carry these blessed backpacks, they will feel your presence and the love and support of this congregation each day. We also pray for the teachers, the staff, and the administration in our schools. May they be courageous to learn as they are to teach, as courageous to praise as they are to discipline. May they know the love, prayers, and support of the community. We pray in the name of Jesus, whom we seek to follow and imitate every day. Amen. Yay, that was a long prayer, wasn't it, Emmett? Yeah, okay, so you may have a sucker, and then you may go back to your seat while the congregation uh, stands as you are able and joins me in singing, Uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. You're welcome. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Oh, with me still I will follow, though none. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Amen. You may be seated. Our sermon scripture today is taken from the book of Colossians, and experts disagree about who wrote Colossians. There are a lot of similarities to Ephesians, which experts disagree about who wrote Ephesians. A lot of older experts want to put both of those in the Pauline epistles, saying that the Apostle Paul wrote these. And so, we don't know for sure, but it's very similar to Paul's language. So, if it wasn't Paul, it was someone trying to imitate Paul in order to have Paul's credibility. So, whoever is writing is writing to the church in Colossa, which is in the Roman province of Asia Minor, I believe. And, of course, this is before doctrine was established. They were visiting and worshiping in homes, and so there was some conflict about how we practice. And so, Paul, or whoever is writing to the Colossians, is telling them, how to be Christians, talking especially in chapter 3 about the virtues, the character traits that reorient our lives around the cross. So here, listen to 
verses 12 through 17 of Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everyone together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me as I prepare to bring a message. Lord God, we are thankful for Your calling on our lives even when that calling requires of us changes. And so, Lord, we come to this auspicious week right before school starts with some trepidation. And so, Lord, we ask that You walk with us, that You comfort us, that You encourage us, and that for the next few minutes, Your Spirit comes and sits with us so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for we know that you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Students of various levels are packing their backpacks this week. Some of them have already started school, and I'm sure that it brings a mix of excitement and dread all at once. The same can be true of teachers who are facing students for the first time. Could be said of adults. I know that uh, my girlfriend Cindy sent her oldest son to college for the first time this last week. That is a new experience for both of them. It's exhilarating and dreadful all at once. The same kind of emotional mix and dread is also felt, I think, by people in the workplace, whenever there's a new boss, or when you're promoted, or when there is a new practice or method or product that you have to learn, there's some excitement and yet some fear all at once, all wrapped up. And even retirees, those who aren't working or going to school anymore, I think can feel when school is starting again, especially here in a college town, we know that there's more people in town more activity in town. We have to practice driving a little slower down, where is it now, 8th Avenue Southwest. (laughs) Things are changing. Reminds us that the hot, humid days are getting fewer, but the winter is a little bit closer than we'd probably like to realize. Change, of course, is inevitable. And it's said that the only person who likes change is a baby with a wet diaper. But regardless of our preferences, God is always calling us, just like God called the Israelites back in Joshua to change our circumstances, to move with God's plan. In order to move with God's plan, the Israelites had to stop wandering in the wilderness and start conquering their destiny, start facing their giants. And so what does it take? What do we need in order to move toward the change to which God is calling us. What supplies do we need for that? As we pack our backpacks for the change ahead, what do we need to take with us that will equip us for success? Well, Paul, or someone very much like him, gives us a list in Colossians 3 that I gave you a preview with the children. He says to make sure that you take with you compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, 
and patience. So I want to unpack that for you a little bit. Those are good things to take with us. Compassion, as I told the children, literally means to suffer with. The Greek word used to write the Colossians is translated here as compassion is really two terms, splonksna and oiktermu. Now, splonksna, I love that word, it has to do with guts. Doesn't it just sound gutsy, splonksna? And oiktermu can be translated as mercy. Now, mercy means that somebody doesn't get what they probably have coming to them. For instance, if one team is so far ahead at some point in the game that the opponent doesn't have a chance to catch up. It is merciful to call the game rather than let the team get the whoop and it probably has coming. Okay, that's mercy. So, compassion is a feeling in the gut towards someone else, a feeling that wants to protect that person from some kind of unpleasantness. It's kind of like a combination of affection sympathy and mercy. It's kind of how I feel for my little sister. I remember one time when I was eight, we had a bring your sister to school day or something. For whatever reason, my sister joined us third graders for recess. We lived across the street from the school, so maybe it was by her own initiative, but I don't think so. Anyway, she came and went to recess with us third graders and for whatever reason, she got bucked off the teeter-totter and fell face-first into a pile of grass clippings. I'm sure it hurt a little, but she was more shocked and embarrassed and began to weep. And so when I heard that, I came to where she was and gently picked her up and let her know that she's safe. And she had so much grass in her thick, dark brown hair that it was hard to tell what she had more of, grass or hair. And so, as I began to brush her hair with my hand, I said, let's see if we can get the hair out of your grass. And she began to smile, and I could see that her shock and embarrassment began to fade. That's compassion. I have compassion for my little sister. And as I've grown, I have learned that many adults, including most men, whether they would realize it or not, or admit it or not, have a three-year-old part of themselves inside of them that wants someone to pick them up, let them know they're safe, and try to take the hair out of their grass. And so there's people at your workplace and people where you've see people and people at school who will need that kind of compassionate affection. And so, let's put that in our backpacks. Kindness. Kindness, we think we know, but it's an English translation of the Greek word Christotis. Christotis. And sometimes, kindness can also mean goodness or generosity. Like in Galatians, when we have the, you know, Galatians, is it five? Have the list of the fruits of the Spirit. Sometimes they say generosity, and sometimes they say goodness, and sometimes they say kindness. They're all kind of the same word. But I like this idea of generosity. I talked to you last week about generosity. It means giving of ourselves in order to let people know that we have a relationship with God. It, 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 we give that says something about our relationship with God. Here, I think it means giving of ourselves, and I don't think it necessarily means money. It can also mean time, or more importantly, it can mean compliments. It's kind to compliment others, especially in school and work settings. Studies have been done that show that people will not perform in a way that's inconsistent with how they see themselves. And some people view others as the only mirror for their self-esteem. And so they're looking to us to tell whether they can do something or not. And so by being kind, we can encourage them to do well because if we say that they can do something, they probably will. If we say, oh, that's too hard for you, they probably will fail. People need to be encouraged. They need to be complimented in order to reach the height of their fullest potential. 
And so, let's take some kindness with us when we go into school or into the workplace or into where other people gather. Humility can be translated from a combina- was translated from a combination of two Greek words, one that means thinking or forming an opinion, and the other term means something akin to the position of a servant. So literally it means to think of oneself as a servant. In a word, it's unassuming, or I guess the opposite would be entitled. So not being entitled it must be endemic to human nature because ever since New Testament parable times, Jesus has been telling us not to be entitled. You probably remember the parable where He talks about this man who took a seat of honor that didn't belong to Him and then had to experience the shame when the host came by and said, that doesn't belong to you. Humility says take the lower seat and have someone invite you to take the higher seat. It means when you go to school, don't think that you're going to be elected as the homecoming queen or be a shoe-in for the starting quarterback or even the lead in the play. If you aren't qualified, if you haven't paid your dues, that leads to others feeling resentful. That leads to anger, which often leads to violence. So in order to reduce resentfulness, anger, and violence, let's pack a little humility into our backpacks. The word meekness, I think, suffers from a lot of mistranslations. Often people think of meekness as being weak, but it also can be translated as courtesy, or as I told the children, wise gentleness. So it's not weakness. It's rather the opposite. Weakness is an incapacity to do something with power, the incapacity to change something, the incapacity to do something that takes strength. Meekness means that you have the strength, but you choose not to use it because you'd rather be gentle. It's kind of like how a mother, well, I imagine how a mother speaks to a child in the middle of the night. I've never been there, for better or worse. But I'm sure that she wants to say, would you please stop crying and go back to sleep? But that would probably be counterproductive. And so, she holds the child close to her body, speaks softly and gently to let the child know that he or she is safe. It's speaking kindness in the face of so much anger and fear. And so, you might say that even hostage negotiators are meek. They're not weak, (laughs) very powerful people, but they choose to be wise with their strength in order to reduce anger, fear, violence. That's sometimes required as a tool in our backpacks. Lastly, in our backpacks, the writer says to load patience. The The Greek word is makrothumia. Macro, as we know from like macroeconomics, means something to a great extent or dimension or degree. Sometimes we think of patience as as waiting, but it's more than that. It's, It's like carrying something you don't have to for a long time. It's more than just waiting your turn to get on the swings. It's more like forbearance, like In terms of an interpersonal relationship, it means long-suffering or having a very long fuse to the dynamite of your anger. My brother-in-law, for instance, has that in spades. (laughs) He and my sister are in the process of raising their fourth daughter, and they're in the sandwich generation. They have aging parents, a -a nine-and-a-half-month-old grandson, and a seventh grader. About eight years ago, my brother-in-law changed careers from being a music teacher, which also requires a lot of patience, to being a teacher counselor at the Abbott House in Mitchell, South Dakota. The Abbott House provides around-the-clock residential services for teenage girls in need of supervision. So he can't tell us a lot about what he does. He certainly can't give us names. But I remember when he interviewed for the job, they said, we're looking for somebody who can be good with teenage girls and their problems. 
He says, that's what I do every day as a dad. And he does. He is so patient. So sometimes in order to get along at school, at work, or even in the church, we need to forbear one another. We need to be patient with one another. So let's put some patience in our backpacks. But over all of that, over all of that, the writer says to wear a clothing of love. So imagine that love is the raincoat or the umbrella that goes over the backpack that covers compassion and kindness and meekness and patience and humility. So why would we do this? Why would we pack our backpacks with all of these virtues and then lay love over the top? Well, two reasons. One reason to wear love over all and to pack with all of these virtues is that love binds us together. The writer says love binds us together in perfect harmony. Notice he didn't say unity. He said harmony. Harmony is not multiple voices all singing the same note. No, harmony is a diversity of voices, all combining their voices together in one composition where the beauty comes from the diversity. Harmony can't happen. The beauty of harmony can't happen if they're both singing the same note. Harmony means you contribute your part and I contribute my part and we make more beautiful music together than either one of us can by just singing the same note. Love binds us together in harmony. God wants us to live in harmony And another reason is because the Spirit of God chooses to live within us. In fact, the writer says, may Christ dwell in you richly. Dwell doesn't mean you're coming for a visit. Dwell means you take up residence in a place. Christ dwells in you richly. From the time that we had the ability to perceive the outside world, God has been wooing us into a relationship, inviting us into God's house and knocking on the doors of our hearts. And so I believe that even before we could talk, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has wanted to come into your lives. So the reason we want to pack our backpacks with these virtues and overlay them with love is so that Christ can dwell in us richly. Now, I realize that for the purpose of back to school, I'm mixing the biblical metaphor a little bit. The writer calls these virtues clothing. Okay, so I'm using a backpack analogy. The writer is using a clothing analogy. But what we're both talking about is character. The height of our character is determined by how low our behavior will stoop when we think no one is watching. Right? Ever watch your kids when they don't think you're watching? What will they do? The height of our character is determined by how low we will stoop when we think no one is watching. And so these are the virtues that the writer wants us to have even when we're not being held accountable to them. But in explaining the biblical metaphor of clothing, seminary professor John Berquist told a story of how his grandmother tended to have clothing with lots of pockets out of which she could produce whatever a grandchild needed at the time. I don't know if you ever had a grandma like that, but it could be anything. It could be a tissue to dry your tears or candy or an aspirin or uh, anesthetic ointment, whatever was needed. Grandma just had it in her, on her person. Who knows? He said his grandmother was always prepared to give to others. And so he said putting on these virtues is like clothing ourselves with Colossian character traits by being prepared for others' needs by already having it on your person. That's what character is, already having what others need. So the good news today is that God gives us these virtues. 
and character traits, and we need to use these virtues. God gives us these because God knows that we need them to accomplish the tasks to which God calls us. And remember, God doesn't always call the equipped, but God always equips the called. So receive God's equipment of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, but overall, bind everything together in love. Amen. And of course, one of the ways that we demonstrate our love for God, that we demonstrate our kindness, our generosity, is by literally giving a portion of the financial resources that God has given us. And so for, the purpose, for that purpose, we have put a plate in the back. If you came with cash or a check, you certainly may donate there. Or those of you online, you can go to a button on our website that says Donate and do it that way. If you're a regular member or you want to make this your church home, you certainly can make it easy on yourself and us by uh, signing a form for electronic funds transfer in your bank. Talk to our bank, and it's, it'll stay that way until you change it. So there are many ways in which you can give, and yet I mention that because giving is a part of worship. All right, as we move into our call to prayer, you've been sitting for a while. I'll invite you to stand as we sing this together. Uh, Be still, my soul, just verse 1. seated, and we move into a time of prayers, and for this, uh, online worshipers, I wish there was a way that you could contribute in real time, but if you wanted to send a note to pastor at Epworth Valley, no, pastor at, yeah, epworthvalleycity.com, I will receive it and pray for you. So for those of you in the sanctuary, I invite you to lift up any concerns you have, and then joys, starting with the concerns so that we may end in joy. So what concerns are there on your hearts today? Yes, Craig has a concern or maybe a joy. You want to read? Okay, thank you. Yes, pray for Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee, some of Craig's favorite actors, apparently. Yay. Okay. Lord, in your mercy. All right. Other concerns? Okay. Okay. And your brother's name? Arnold Rorda. Perry's brother is um, more than likely becoming a permanent resident of a nursing home. And so, Lord, in your mercy. Other concerns? Well, I was asked this week to put two new people on the prayer list. You will notice that under those living with cancer, we've added Herbert Trebold. That's Pat's husband. He's in a hospital in Fargo. Uh, Esophageal cancer, I think, is his diagnosis. 
And then under the other prayer concerns there at the bottom of the list is Jake Steen, and that is the grandson, 26-year-old grandson of Marvin and Darlene Bloom, the son of their daughter, and he's hospitalized in Fargo, uh, no, in, um, in Rochester, thank you. I'm glad that many of you um, know this as well as I do. Um, and so be in prayer for the Steen family and the, and the Bloom family. Lord, in your mercy. Other concerns? Let me add some other concerns that I have um, for our denomination uh, specifically. Uh, Reverend Paul Lint this morning is, uh, well, he's in need of your prayer. Um, the news is good in terms of his Achilles tendon repair. Uh, he will be able to wear a boot when they can fashion one for him, um, but he's still got uh, several months of recovery. But today, he is in Ellendale representing the United Methodist Church in a conversation that the Ellendale congregation wants to have about the possibility of disaffiliation. And so there's um, a United Methodist elder there representing the disaffiliating side of the debate, and Paul is there representing the United Methodist side of the debate. It's interesting that Ellendale is a federated church, meaning that there are people who declare themselves to be United Methodist and people in the same church who declare themselves to be some other denomination and they worship together. So if part of the church decides to disaffiliate, I don't know what that means exactly, but um, yeah, disaffiliation is becoming very real. So we'll be in prayer for Paul and the Ellendale congregation. Also, the Council of Bishops, meaning the bishops of the United Methodist Church, are meeting this week, uh, and their first and last session is available on, online, on Zoom. So their first session is tomorrow, begins at 8 a.m. Central, and then again at the same time on Friday. And they're meeting to um, consider the future of the denomination and, of course, the uh, election of bishops that will be taking place this fall at jurisdictional conferences. So um, I think you can join them on the Council of Bishops Facebook page if you're interested in that. So for all of that, Lord, in your mercy. Okay, other concerns? Are there joys among us? We had a nice rain. Hallelujah. That was good. It feels like it hadn't rained for a month and a half. So, in our joys. Randy. Yes, the flowers on the altar today are provided by Jan McCarthy. In our joy. Okay, very good. It was bittersweet to um, memorialize Joyce Potter in this sanctuary yesterday. The family, mostly from outside of the area, came, returned to the place where a lot of them began their faith journey. And um, we had buried Joyce on July 5th, and we had her memorial yesterday. So uh, thank you to all of those who helped with that and uh, your hospitality. Um, spoke volumes to that family, so thank you for that. In our joy. Okay. Any other joys? Okay, hearing none, I will then invite you into a time of silent prayer that I will break with a pastoral prayer and then the Lord's Prayer. Holy and loving God, we come to you at the end of the summer, or at least it feels that way. College students are coming back 
Elementary and secondary students are preparing their backpack. Churches are gearing up for another program year. We come with a mix of emotions. We thank you for learning, for the opportunity to learn. And yet many of us have some fear about what we can't see coming. We want to be prepared. And yet, Lord, you call us to move outside our comfort zones where growing and learning take place. So we ask that you walk with us through the scary parts of our week. We pray that you give us courage to accept your call. And we thank you, Lord, as we've said already, for the rain that was received. And we are bold to pray that you keep it coming in ample amounts at appropriate times because we know that it represents growth, not just physical and agricultural growth, but it reminds us that in your love we continue to grow as disciples. We pray for those who are looking for faith communities in which they can best express their faith. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless us with newcomers. We pray a special blessing this morning on guests that we have in worship today. And, Lord, being in your, in your presence takes us to places far from here, takes us to places of need anywhere in the world. And so we pray today for those in Ukraine. We pray against despotism in all of its forms and for the resilience of the victims of that. We pray that refugees of war might find safe haven among hospitable nations. And for this and for so much else, we give you thanks and praise as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may remain seated, but let's continue to sing verse 2 of Be Still My Soul. for announcements, and for that, I would direct your attention to the insert in your bulletins. There are many things that um, are there. Are there people who need to lift up things who are prepared to, to talk about that or not? I don't mean to put anyone on the spot. Okay, so next week, 9 a.m., we are kicking off Sunday school, so children are invited to come for um, Sunday fun day at 9 o'clock, and if you didn't bring a backpack last week, you may certainly bring it to Sunday school kickoff, and then um, I think there's some postcards out that on the, 
on the 11th, we will have Sunday school for people 3 to 103. So if that includes you, you are certainly welcome at 9 o'clock for that. Um, also, you'll see that some of us are wearing these, these blue bracelets, Let Go and Let God. They're a gift from the Joyce Potter family. Joyce had, has a niece who lost a child to suicide and addiction, and so it's very poignant in our community because, uh, if I understand it correctly, um, Rob Ingstead died this last week of suicide. Um, and that has ripple effects throughout the community. There's been a number of people I know who have died of suicide, and I know how that affects their families for years. And so um, those of us who care need to shine a light so that those who are walking through darkness have a place uh, to seek help. So I wear the bracelet to let you know I'm a safe person if you need to talk. I will listen. Okay, is there something else? Yes, prayer vigil. Prayer is so important in our lives, and we have this breakthrough prayer that invites us to be bold and limitless and break forth from what's usual. And we have a signature ministry for Washington School, and so I want to invite you to come tonight at 6 o'clock. It's a time that corresponds with the first digit in our address, 680 8th Avenue Southwest. It's going to be a short service. We'll start in the sanctuary. I'll talk about prayer just a little bit, and then we'll sing a song, and then I'll invite you to go out and walk around the school or Sam's Field or sit on a bench and lift up a silent prayer. Interestingly enough, um, this last October, August 18th was five years since um, Sam Nesky died, and what a wonderful tribute that is to his life to have that um, field there attached to the school that's our signature ministry. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to join us, spread the word. You don't need to be United Methodist um, in order to pray. You're not going to be asked to pray out loud outside, um, but I do hope that, that you'll join me as we circle Washington School in prayer, literally. Other announcements? Okay. I'll invite you to stand then as you are able, and we'll say together our breakthrough prayer before singing our closing song. Dear God, unleash us in your bold, limitless spirit. Help us to break free from where we are and lead us to where you want us to go. Call us to risk, call us to change, call us to follow your good news. Amen.
and run my course with ease and joy, and closely walk with thee to heaven. Amen. I invite you now to join me in this unison benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.